What's going on? It's been quite some time since I've last posted on my channel, and I wanted to kind of kick things off with my first video being my goal list for 2020. Now, last year was honestly a hot mess. I wanted to, honestly, I really wanted to make a goal video, but unfortunately, time, I don't know, making excuses. And I, that's exactly what I did. I made excuses, I procrastinated. I actually posted something on my Instagram about it in regards to what I wanted to go and accomplish uh, for last year. But sadly, I, I didn't do very much, <laughs> to be honest with you. But um, hopefully this year is a, is a big difference. And I can't wait to kick off this year with my goal list of 2022. Let's go. So like I said, last year, I had honestly some real good goals, but they were super, super heavy. And I didn't get a crap ton off of the list. I had some really good books on there that I really wanted to get. But to be honest with you, they were really high out of my price range. And I, I could not afford to get some of those books. Of course, we had X-Men 94. We had Spider-Man 33, Batman 4, 23, Giant Size X-Men. And that's just to name a few. And those are pretty big books. And unless you got like a whole bunch of changes sitting around, those books are not easy to come by and get at a good price. That's not going to hurt my bank or my wife's not going to kill me. But this to say, some books I was able to snag uh, last year, some of those being X-Men 266, the first appearance of Gambit, one of my favorite X-Men, Thor 337. You guys know me. I had a buttload of them. I gave a lot of them away. I think I'm down to like two now. So I have added one into my collection, which is my, my Slab 337, which of course is the first appearance of Beta Ray Bill. I added the Bat, uh, Batman Mask of Phantasm, the first appearance of Phantasm, of course, which is far to, part of my childhood. I loved Batman. That was one of the biggest things that got me into comics and birthed me into where I am today. Um, the last book that I want to say was probably pretty significant for me was The Amazing Adventures 11, the first appearance of the Furry Beast. So needless to say, I didn't do too bad. I didn't get crap off my list except for I think except for Gambit was the only book maybe Gambit and Thor were the only two books that were like the real books that were on my list everything else was far out of reach so for this year I wanted to make it a little bit more attainable instead of going for massive books I'd rather go for books that I know I can honestly find in the wild or even get off of eBay but it's in my price range that I can afford um, and not being extremely expensive like there are books that are still high up there but they're not like over the top expensive books so the first book in no particular order to kick things off is the Nose Prize book, which is issue one. It was published in 1982 for Marvel Comics. Now, this comic book features a collection of all these Marvel mistakes that they had inside of their published work. And I am a huge fan of Stanley. I, I can't stress it enough. I got a chance to meet him, which I was very happy about. He signed a book for me. Of course, all this happened before he passed away, sadly, but... Uh, I'm a big fan of his and I do have a couple of books that have Stanley on the cover and I wanted to add more to that collection this being one of them the no prize book issue one from 1982 on to number nine we have the demon issue one published in 1972 from DC Comics now, I've been on the hunt to complete my run for the first Jack Kirby run of the uh, demon and since I was a kid watching him on like Justice League uh, Egerton the demon he, he was just such a cool character to me and it just piqued my interest and now as an adult I'm like you know what let me go back and see if I can get some of those books and currently I have issue 2, 3, 5, 9, and 13 from the complete run which is uh, I want to say 16 issues to complete the first volume that Jack Kirby did of the demon. On to my next my next book on the list which is uh, number 8 we have Marvel Superheroes issue 20. Now, this was published back in 1969 from Marvel Comics. Doctor Doom is one of my all-time favorite villains. Anti-hero, depends on how you see him. But honestly, in just my opinion, he's honestly really, really dope. And if it wasn't for Reed Richards, that stupid Reed Richards, um, he would be honestly a hero. He's, he's a pretty cool dude. And I, I've always dug him from when I was a kid to now. And he's, he's one of my top superheroes of all time if you will um so in this issue no spoilers well a little bit of spoilers but diablo has kidnapped uh his childhood friend friend valeria and it's an attempt to convince him to join up and join forces so that he can go and take over earth using dr doom's time machine all right so this part i won't spoil i won't spoil the ending for you but you you get to really get appreciation of who uh, Dr. Doom is and kind of you feel for him you feel for the guy honestly um, 
I know I did when I read this book. I read it digitally, of course. I can't, I couldn't get it at the time. So now I'm trying to get it, and that's why it's on my list. And at number seven, Superman versus Muhammad Ali, published back in 1978 from DC Comics. We all love Muhammad Ali. Well, most of us love Muhammad Ali. And this is an absolute stellar Neil Adams cover. And it just, it was a book that eluded me back in the years. Uh, one of my LCSs or local LCSs for me um, ended up having that book. And they had a sale going on a couple of days later. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to try to snag this book when the sale's on. And they had it priced for like $99 at the time. The sale would have been 50% off all back issues. So I would have had a really, really solid steal on this book. And I walked in, I camped out that morning, like super, super early that morning. And I ran straight in, I knew exactly where it was located, ran straight in, no book to be found. I asked them, hey, what's going on with this? And they said that, again, they they sold it, which I highly doubt it, because a couple of weeks later, I came back into the store and there's a book sitting up there. So kind of a bummer, in my, my opinion, the fact that they took it down, but needless to say this book is something that i've really wanted to go and grab my hands on and it will ultimately determine who is the greatest of all time who is the goat is it superman or muhammad ali in at number six we have star wars thrawn issue one published back in 2018 from marvel comics now, i've been a big fan of thrawn since his first appearance in the tv series i'm very lucky enough to own his first appearance which is like skyrocketed now since spoilers mandalorian season two when ahsoka talked about him saying where is his whereabouts so as as far as Thrawn, thrawn i've i've really wanted to get into this series and issue one is the best place to start i would say um i i honestly i cannot wait to see how he is portrayed in the mandalorian or in ahsoka when it comes through but yeah we're here halfway there at number five, which is our first indie book for the list, it's Mighty Morphin Power Rangers issue 21, published back in 2017 from Boom Studios. Now, this is Stanley's box variant, if you call it. And as a child, Power Rangers was something that I grew up watching as a kid, and it was a huge part of my childhood. Honestly, like it was like Ninja Turtles, Power Rangers, wrestling, and comics, and it was almost in that order. Um, I wanted to be a Power Ranger. I wanted to be a turtle. I wanted to be a wrestler. I became neither. I became a nerd. But on this cover, which is, like I said, Stanley's box variant, it actually has Stanley cameoing as Zordon, which I thought was so cool. And I was like, man, I got to get this book. And that's why it's on my list at number five. At number four, we got Star Wars Ewoks number one, published back in 1985 from Marvel Comics. Now, who honestly doesn't like the Ewoks? As a Star Wars fan, this book for me is a must-have my PC. Seeing Ewoks in return was was absolutely stellar for me. I, I love the fact that Ewoks was in there. And as a kid, it was like these little, little people had the ability to do so much damage. But it wasn't later on until Battlefront when I had the opportunity to see the darker side of the Ewoks. And I'm not even joking with you, like Ewoks at night, holy crap. That, that's a you know what ewoks in the dark that is a solid podcast reference speaking of podcast you can always go and check out my podcast just a little podcast wherever you listen to the podcast you can also check me out on social media and i also have a link down below so you can check me out there but on to number three we have batman issue 200 this was published back in 1968 from dc comics it's another neil adams cover and it, i absolutely love this cover the, the pink background, you're having all the different issues behind it. It just, it's so freaking dope. And this issue is the man who radiated fear, which of course is Scarecrow. Scarecrow is basically testing out a new pill that will make his victims deathly afraid of something specific. Kind of ring a bell to you? Like it rings a bell to me. But we're getting down to the second to last book. On to Star Wars issue 55. Now this was published back in 2018 from Marvel Comics. I'm a big, big Cad Bane fan. I'm actually a big Bounty Hunter fan in general, but of my favorite are Cad Bane and of course, Boba Fett. So this is honestly just a cover buy for me, nothing more, nothing less. It's been it's been speculated that we're gonna get Cad Bane in, in the near future as far as live action. I'm praying to God, hoping to God that we do get him because like I said, he's one of my favorite Bounty Hunters. But I believe this one's a, maybe the sixth issue out of this like hope dies arc don't quote me on that but it is a galactic icon variant 
and hopefully I can get this in my PC sometime in 2022. Now we're here. We made it to numero uno, the oldest book on my top 10 list. It is Johnny Quest, Mystery of the Lizardmen, published back in 1964 from Golden Key Comics. Now this book has been uh, a book that I've really, really loved. It's a, It has sentimental value for me for growing up as a kid watching cartoons, especially watching cartoons with my dad. This is something that we watched on a regular. This and Star Trek were things that we watched on a regular among Westerns and all that other crap. But this is just like a book to honor my dad. Um, and I something that I, I really will hold dear to my to myself, hold dear to my PC. And it's one of those books that will probably never leave the PC. And yeah, so miss you, dad. Uh, can't wait to see you up in heaven. But till then, I'll be cherishing this book once I get it. Now, this is an adaptation of the first episode of Johnny Quest. And it's an old book, 1964. That's what? Silver Age? So that's a Silver Age key for me, baby. But yeah, that's it. My 2022 goal list. I hope you enjoy this. Wish me luck on acquiring these books. But until next time, stay safe and I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.